Yeah, we're at the business end of this season's Indian Premier League where qualification can be determined by the barest of margins. Earlier on Thursday, the latest encounter in the competition between third-placed Sunrisers Hyderabad and the already eliminated Gujarat Giants was abandoned without a ball being bowled due to rain. And while the outcome confirmed Sunrisers' place in this season's playoffs, the loss of opportunity to cop all two points also hampered their chances of claiming the remaining spot in the top two, which would have pitted them against West Indians, Andre Russell, Sunil Narayan and their team, the Kolkata Knight Riders, in Qualifier 1. So it's once again advantage Rothman Powell, Shimran Hitmar and their Rajasthan Royals who simply need to win their final league game against the KKR on Sunday to seal that remaining qualifier one spot. That's a top two position. Nikhil Utam Chandani now joins us via Zoom to discuss the Royal Slump and Sunrisers' unfortunate luck. I guess some would say bad luck. Nikhil Utam Chandani, welcome to the Sportsmax Zone. How are you doing today, sir? Yeah. The way the IPL is meandering along, obviously the rain hasn't helped the last couple of days. But I think if that RCB CSK game plays on Saturday, we could be in for a real blockbuster finish. Yeah, just give us the summary of where we are in the IPL and what is happening as it relates to the qualifiers. Yeah, a few different scenarios for that Rajasthan Royals team, as you mentioned. They, as you said, simply have to win. But I think if you're a Sunrisers team, you're almost backing yourself to get into that top two. Basically, you just need Punjab, who I think they've, they've really got nothing to lose. A few young players trying to prove themselves for next year's mega auction. So, and the way that Rajasthan have played losing four in a row, I think Punjab will back themselves to win that game. And then Sunrisers sort of need to just hope that they can, well, obviously they had the rain-affected game. But yeah, they just need to hope results can go their way. And that top two for me is so critical because you want that second chance, you want that second bite at the cherry. And yeah, for the other teams, RCB CSK, 90% chance of rain on Saturday, so it's not looking ideal. And that Chennai Super Kings team, every year, Ricardo, they just seem to find themselves in the playoffs and in a final. So the finals in Chennai this year, how perfect would it be for MS Dhoni to go out like that? I mean, it could be yeah, excellent. And yeah, just a correction, I said Rajasthan playing Punjab is actually the other way around. Sunrise is playing Punjab. And Rajasthan have KKR, who obviously have been the most dominant team in the tournament. Yeah, very much the case. It, it really is a, a fine finish to the preliminary stage, but you would expect that with a competition like this. Um, because there is so much quality there that even teams who are at the lower end of the table can create upsets when you're trying to determine the playoff teams. Most definitely. I look at that Punjab-Rajasthan matchup. This Rajasthan team... It's amazing how much they've sort of dropped off. They, they, they started the tournament so well. And they had batters contributing for them from one to about seven, which is something they've missed in previous years. But you look at the last four games, none of their top three have gone deep. And that's been the big problem. There's been no Jai Swell. Obviously, Joss Butler's left for the last three. And Sanju Sampson, who's been in red hot form this season, just hasn't simply found the run. So I look at that as a weakness. I look at Trent Bolt's performances. He's been stunning in the way he started and set the tempo for the innings. But in those four games that they've lost, he's gone at 10 runs and over and he's only got two wickets. So there are a few things that I think are not going well for them at the wrong time. And they're going to hope to use that game against um, KKR. If they can get that win, hopefully KKR maybe rest some players. Use that to try and develop some confidence. But I can, can you imagine you lose five games straight and then you have to go and play an eliminator? It can be very difficult. Yeah, it can be very difficult as well and, and from a psychological standpoint as well because I'm pretty sure four games ago the Royals would be thinking we're going to get into the top two and have two bites at the cherry and now they're looking at a situation where they might not be there and find themselves in an eliminator first match in the playoffs. But uh, you know, Nikhil, I was looking today and I saw that the ICC released the fixtures for the World Cup warm-up matches and I thought to myself, oh shoot, we're that close to the World Cup, um, which starts on the 1st of June and then the IPL ends on the 28th of June. The West Indies, for example, will have um, matches against South Africa here in Jamaica um, starting on the 23rd of May. So, so help us to understand how all of this cricket in close proximity and some of it overlapping will affect one, um, some of the IPL teams and players and the national teams as well and specifically how it may or may not affect the West Indies. 
Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting, to be honest. And it's been fascinating how the different boards around the world have dealt with it. You look at England, they didn't waste any time. They've got up a series against Pakistan starting in three days as a warm-up for the World Cup. They pulled all of their players. And you could argue that England probably have the most important overseas players in the IPL. Butler, Moin Ali at Chennai, Will Jacks at RCB, Phil Salt at KKR, who's had an outstanding season. So they didn't play around. Um, you can look at Bangladesh as well. They pulled Mustafi Zor, who had 11 wickets the most for Chennai at that stage, on May 1st. So they believed that he was, get, would get more from playing Zimbabwe than he would sort of from being in the IPL, which I don't know if I tend to agree with. However, you then look at the other boards who have opted to keep their players in. So New Zealand, the West Indies, South Africa. And you have to wonder how much rest or how mentally prepared and fresh will these guys be able to come in? I look at New Zealand specifically. They've got, uh, they've denied the opportunity to play warm-up games because the, half the squad won't be there. They had nine players in this year's IPL. And half of them get there on June 1st. Imagine five days later, you've got that game against Afghanistan, which could pretty much make or break your World Cup chances. So it is extremely tough. And from a West Indies perspective, I think luckily Lucknow have gone out, Delhi have gone out, so you'll get those guys coming back. But we have to see whether they're picked in that Jamaica series next week. And also, what mental capacity are they in? Because I would argue you've got Kyle Mears, Shamar Joseph, who will be around the squad. They haven't played much in the IPL, but it is mentally taxing. You're there for almost two months, bowling, batting constantly, traveling. It must take some toll on you as a player. How can the players, management staff, get themselves ready for a World Cup? So for me, Ricardo, I think this World Cup is going to be won more off the field than it is on the field. Yeah, and I'm looking at the warm-up matches here, and I see that the West Indies will play Australia at Queen's Park Oval. This is on May 30, so this is two days after the IPL ends. Of course, at this stage, we're not quite sure if any of the West Indian players will be in the IPL final, but it is a strong possibility. Um, and because of that, you could end up in a situation where when you play your first warm-up match, you don't have your full available World Cup squad for that game, which is not exactly ideal preparation for a tournament of this magnitude, is it? No, and it's all it's been happening with all the other teams. You look at India. Uh, as you said, the ICC stipulates you play two warm-up games before every major event. India have denied to play their second one. They'll play one in New York. New Zealand are not playing any. South Africa are playing an intra-squad warm-up game. So they've denied playing opposition. And then you've got teams like England, Pakistan. They're only going to play one. So it's really weird how teams, some of them think it's important to play. Others prefer to have the time within the squad. And yeah, it's quite weird to have a tournament with this much importance. And it's kind of so disorganized. And I guess that's the nature and how big the IPL is, where the teams want the best chance. And I kind of understand from the board's perspective, you want your players making the most money. So I completely understand leaving them there. But at some stage, you've got to balance their mental psyche, their physical body. Someone like Andrew Russell, who's played every game this season, has bowled and batted a lot for KKR. If he plays in that final, is he going to be able to turn around and go in West Indies' first game against Papua New Guinea? That would be a big question because when I look at the makeup of the team, he is one of the most important members because of his death bowling and, of course, his power hitting. Yeah, very much the case. And uh, you speak about um, the South Africa intra-squad match. That will be on the 29th of May, Wednesday. And just looking at some of the other fixtures, one of the things we realize from what you have just said, a lot of the teams who are playing um, their full complement of warm-up matches are the lower-ranked teams, the likes of Canada and Nepal, Oman, Papua New Guinea, Namibia, Uganda. Um, we see Sri Lanka, the Netherlands, Bangladesh, USA. But the big names, as you pointed out, Australia, India, um, South Africa, West Indies, England, um, those teams, not the case. And uh, it, it will make quite interesting reading, especially as well if the surfaces in the Caribbean um, are what we are accustomed to. And a lot of those um, players will have to adjust to the Caribbean and U.S. conditions. Um, it could be quite an interesting dynamic going into the tournament, I think. No, it'll be massive. And I have good news for West Indian fans. I think a situation like this benefits the West Indies and maybe a team like South Africa because yeah. you've had two years where this 15-man group has played together. Whereas you look at some of the other teams, India rarely have played together with this group. Australia, they've chopped and changed. New Zealand have had injuries. So the fact that this team know each other so well, there's that familiarity. I think it will benefit the teams where it's such a 
willy-nilly is all over the place going into the tournament. But look, I think that series next week against South Africa, even though they will be, they could potentially have six of their guys still at the IPL, I still think that'll be really good preparation for guys like Aki Hossein, Jason Holder, guys who weren't present at the IPL. But I'm looking at Rutherford, Shamar Joseph, Kyle Mears. They didn't play a, a single game at the, the, well, Joseph played two, but Rutherford didn't play, Mears didn't play. And how does that sort of factor into their preparation if they're asked to sort of get straight into the 11 at a World Cup? Yeah, I can't wait to see what the West Indies squad um, 11s will look like for that series against South Africa. Should be quite interesting. Nikhil Utam Chandani, as usual, it's always a pleasure chatting with you. And I'm sure we'll be chatting a lot in the coming weeks, if not the next month and a half. Because, yes, the Cricket World Cup T20 version almost here back in the Caribbean. Take care, Nikhil. Yeah, thank you, man. Say hi to Maria for me. She says hi to you as well. We take a break. We'll be back with more on the Sports Max Zone.